Izumaki Naruto has one year left before he takes the graduation test of the Ninja Academy of Kanahagakure, the Hidden Leaf Village. One day, he wakes up to see a floating screen in front of him, claiming that it can help him accomplish his dream of becoming Hokage. Follow Naruto as he goes on a journey to become Hokage, and maybe have a harem of beautiful women from all over the world along the way. Including female Sasuke and female Haku by the way. What's up, guys? It's your boy Omni Sensei back with a new Naruto What If series. What if Naruto had a leveling up system? Naruto X Harem. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. The sun just rose in Kanahagakur, the Hidden Leaf Village. Kanoha resides deep within a forest at the base of a mountain known as the Hokage Rock, which has the faces of all those who have taken the office of Hokage engraved on it. It is surrounded on all sides by enormous walls. We head towards an old unsightly apartment complex. Inside one of the rooms, there was a child sleeping soundly while hugging a holster. The child enjoyed sleeping so much so that he was drooling a little. This child's name is Yuzumaki Naruto, born on the night of October 10th. He is an orphan and he grew up not knowing who his parents were. Not having anyone else to provide for him, Naruto received monthly income from the village in order to afford daily necessities. Naruto has yellow blonde spiky hair and bright blue eyes. His trademark characteristics are the three whisker markings on his cheeks. He is rather short for his age, being only 138.5 centimeters at age 11. Reing 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 bam. Naruto groaned as he slammed the alarm clock on the nightstand beside his bed. He dreaded that sound, but it's too late to go back to sleep now, since he was wide awake from the ringing of the alarm clock. I wish I can sleep forever. He grumbled as he rubbed his sleepy eyes. Naruto cracked his knuckles before getting off his bed and starting his day. He walked around his apartment. It was dirty, old, and the roof looked like it was one second away from falling onto Naruto. The floorboards creaked at every step he took, he could only bathe in freezing cold water, as the landlord closed the hot water for his, and only his apartment, for reasons he did not know of. Naruto squeezed out some toothpaste onto his toothbrush and started brushing his teeth. It was hot mint flavored toothpaste, he heard some say that it was the most bitter thing ever, but he did not think about it as such. He liked the refreshing feeling it brought after having brushed his teeth with it. Naruto spat out the toothpaste after a few minutes of brushing his teeth and scooped some water from the tap and drank it. He started gargling. Synchronization process starting. PFFT Naruto immediately spat out the water in his mouth and looked at the floating screen in front of him with an expression of pure disbelief. Is this Shinjutsu? Naruto asked himself with a panicked expression on his face. 99% 100% welcome, Yuzumaki Naruto to the helpful system. Would you like to check out your skills? And this thing knows my name. I'm gonna die. Naruto declared dramatically, ignoring the stomping and shouting sound coming from the apartment above him, telling him to shut up. Relax Naruto, I am only here to help. And no, this is not a Jinjutsu. I assure you that this is very real. Oh yeah sure Naruto mumbled, still having a lot of doubt about this helpful system. Naruto sighed and scratched his head, maybe he was still sleeping, and this was just another dream of his. Naruto decided to just move on with his day, he and his classmates had a day off from the ninja academy today, so he was going to train in a forest. Naruto shivered a little as the cold water washed over his naked body. The floating screen was still there. Disappear damn it. Naruto growled out. He was surprised when it actually did disappear. He shrugged, relieved that the jinjutsu that tried to trick him was finally gone. After showering, Naruto wore his daily clothes. He wore an orange and blue jacket with a white collar, a white swirl with a tassel on the left side, and a red Yuzumaki crest on the back. He also wore orange pants with a shuriken holster on his right knee and blue sandals. It was the worst possible outfit a future shinobi like him could ever wear. It stood out like a sore thumb, and he would probably be the first one killed if he actually wore that well on a mission. But this was all Naruto could get as the all of clothing store owners banned him from entering their stores, and chased him out of their stores whenever he tried to buy some clothes. Naruto sighed and shook his head. The villagers of Kanoha all openly ostracized and resented Naruto for reasons that he didn't even know. To be honest, Naruto hated it. He hated those glares and whispers that would be sent his way whenever he walked through the streets of Kanoha. 
But that hatred for the villagers was vastly overshadowed by his confusion of why they hate him. Let's not think about that right now. Naruto whispered before rushing to the kitchen to cook his breakfast. His breakfast contained his favorite meal, cupped ramen that only required boiling water, a cup of ramen, and three minutes of waiting. Skill created. C-O-O-K-I-N-G ramen. Level 1 The practicer's skill of preparing food by combining, mixing, and heating ingredients. Naruto froze as he looked at the same floating screen from before appearing in front of him again. I thought I told you to go away. Naruto shouted at it, receiving no reply. The stomping and shouting coming from the apartment above him came once again, but Naruto ignored that. I cannot go away. I'm stuck with you forever. You Naruto immediately replied. What the hell do you want with me? Naruto quickly asked it. To guide you and nothing else. The helpful system keeps track of the progression of your skills, while giving you some juicy benefits on the side. Like what? Naruto asked. C-O-O-K-I-N-G Raymond. Level 1 Once you max out this skill, you will give people an orgasm when they tasted the ramen you cooked. What the hell is an orgasm? Naruto sighed as he exited his apartment. Since the helpful system said it was stuck with him forever, he would just have to accept it and get over the fact that he has a floating screen that can talk to him and show him his real life skills. Naruto walked through the streets of Kanoha. He saw that the villagers were glaring at him and whispering amongst each other. He was surprised when the floating screen appeared in front of him again. Killing Intent Resistance Level 1 It is simply the user exuding pure killing intention and having it affect their opponent, themselves, and others around them, up to the point of paralyzing them with fear. When the killing intent is particularly strong, it can even give the victim visions of their own gruesome death. This can cause killing intent to be confused with the Jinjutsu, despite it not being a Jutsu at all. Your own killing intent gets 2% stronger when the skill levels up. You are also able to ignore 2% of others killing intent. Naruto widened his eyes as he read the description of his new skill. The villagers hated him so much that they wanted to kill him. What did I do to deserve this damn it? Naruto shouted in his mind as he gritted his teeth and clenched his fists angrily. He shook his head and arrived in the forest clearing. He looked to see that there were several tree stumps in front of him that had targets tied around it. The targets were full of small holes. Naruto opened his shuriken holster and took out a shuriken from it. He threw it at the target, the shuriken didn't even reach halfway before it fell onto the ground. Naruto groaned, he had just threw a faulty shuriken. At this point faulty shurikens are a normal thing for Naruto. He got these from an academy teacher who was generous enough to give it to him. But Naruto immediately knew that the academy teacher was trying to set him up for failure, as soon as he tested it out on these targets. Naruto just kept throwing his shurikens. They were faulty ones and they were ones that were up to standard. Naruto's aim still sucks though. Skill created. Shuriken Jutsu. Level 1 Shuriken Jutsu pertains to techniques that entail the throwing of shuriken, kunai, senbin, or any other number of bladed handheld weapons. Shuriken Jutsu can be used in combination with Tejutsu, Ninjutsu, and or Chakra Flow, in order to create more devastating techniques. Additionally, Shuriken Jutsu can pertain to techniques used through Ninjutsu made weapons. Reduce strength needed to throw shuriken by 2%, and increase shuriken flying speed by 2%. Wow. This is amazing, Naruto cheered as he read through the description of the new skill he just created. Bong. Naruto jumped and pulled out his kunai. He entered a defensive stance and looked around him cautiously. What the hell was that? Naruto wondered. Bong. There it is again. Naruto whispered before dashing towards the place where the banging sound came from. He hid in some bushes when he spotted someone. He is a tall and well-muscled man. He has fair skin, a strong jawline, a somewhat large nose, and black hair. He is most noticeable for his shiny bowl style haircut and thick eyebrows. He wears a green jumpsuit, orange striped leg warmers, and a standard Kanoha flak jacket, which he normally leaves unzipped. His red forehead protector is worn around his waist like a belt. A shinobi. Naruto whispered to himself, noticing the Kanoha forehead protector he was wearing. That shinobi is Mike Guy who is a jonin of Kanahagakur. He leads Team Guy, which was formed a year before the other main Kanoha teams of the series. They specialize in close quarters combat with all of its members using some sort of physical attacks. Guy was grinning while assuming a fighting stance. In front of him was a wooden training dummy. Ha Guy shouted as he leaped towards the dummy. Witness the power of youth dynamic entry. I am. Guy delivered a flying kick straight in the face of the wooden dummy, destroying it in the process. Naruto was amazed at Guy's immense power. Guy landed on the ground and gave a winning smile to the dummy. His pearl white teeth glowed brightly as he grinned confidently at it. Suddenly, he disappeared from thin air, shocking Naruto. Dai suddenly appeared in front of Naruto, scaring him. Ah Naruto yelled as he landed on his butt. 
He looked up at Guy who was grinning at him. And who do we have here? Are you interested in the power of youth too, young man? Who the hell are you? Who? Me. I am Kanoha's noble green beast of prey. I wield the power of youth might guy at your service. Guy introduced himself youthfully while in his nice guy pose. A thumbs up, wink, and winning smile complete with the proverbial ping. Anarudo was stunned at Guy's youthful introduction. Naruto definitely had to match the Jonin's energy now. Naruto flashed a broad grin at Guy. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto and I'm gonna be the Hokage one day believe it, bushy brows. Naruto introduced himself while matching Guy's youthfulness. Oh really now? Are you prepared for the hardships? Are you prepared for the decisions you will make in the future? Are you prepared to make sacrifices? Guy asked Naruto. I don't know bushy brows Naruto answered, genuinely not knowing what to reply to those difficult questions. Guy stretched out his hand, Naruto grabbed it and was pulled up by Guy. That's alright Naruto. You'll find your answer one day. So. What do you think? Guy asked while pointing at the destroyed dummy. Naruto grinned and looked at him with stars in his eyes. That was so cool. How'd you do it? Naruto asked excitedly. Guy grinned as he took out a paper and pencil out of nowhere and started writing something on it. Here. I wrote a routine that I think would be perfect for ninja academy students like you, Naruto. Follow it and one day you'll be as youthful as me, Guy explained as Naruto read what was written on the piece of paper. Let's see 100 push-ups 100 sit-ups. 100 squats and a 10 kilometer run to end it off. Yeah, that all sounds perfect do you wanna kill me or something bushy brows? Naruto shouted angrily at Guy who laughed at his question. I would never do that to you, Naruto. You're brimming with the power of youth, Guy replied cheerfully. This training routine says otherwise. Naruto argued. Guy shook his head. No, no. You got it all wrong, Naruto. I gave you a goal that you can work towards. You need to push yourself and go beyond your limits. Hard work conquers all, and I believe that with hard work and the determination to improve at your side, you can achieve anything Guy declared confidently. I see Naruto whispered as he looked back at the training routine Guy gave him. Guy patted Naruto's back. I see that you're still having some doubts about my words, Naruto. I think I have just the solution to make your doubts go away. Really? What is it? Naruto asked excitedly. Guy grinned and gave him W thumbs up while in his nice guy pose. All you need is a training partner to motivate you, Naruto ha. Huh? And that's 50 come on Naruto. You halfway there keep pushing Guy shouted encouragingly at Naruto who was doing push-ups on the grassy ground. Naruto was currently training under the guidance of Guy. It hurt like hell, every bone and muscle in his body felt like it was about to break apart. I don't think I can anymore, Naruto shouted with sweat dripping down his face uncontrollably. Grit through it, Naruto. The pain of self-discipline will never be as great as the pain of regret pain is just weakness leaving your body. They don't know you son prove them all wrong with the power of youth inside of you, Guy shouted with a grin on his face. HNNGH hard Naruto yelled as he gained a second wind. He started doing the push-ups with Guy motivating him while standing beside him. And that's 100, Guy shouted as Naruto's limbs gave up. Naruto crashed onto the ground face first while groaning in pain. His arms were sore as hell. Don't give up just yet, Naruto. There are still three more exercises for you to complete damn it. Naruto somehow got past performing 100 sit-ups and 100 squats with Guy at his side, giving him youthful and adrenaline boosting motivational speeches. He was currently running the 10 kilometers run with Guy running by his side, still motivating him. Who's gonna carry the boats and the logs huh? Don't be scared of the effort Naruto what the fuck does that mean bushy brows? Naruto shouted while he was running for his life. Guy was running beside him and he wasn't even breaking a sweat. Guy grinned at him. That's for you to figure out, Naruto. For now, run forward with the power of youth Guy shouted as he started running away from Naruto. Hey. Don't run away from me, Naruto screamed as he picked up the pace. Ugh. Naruto groaned as he slumped onto the ground with his face on the dirt. Every single part of his body was on fire from all of the physical exercises he performed in the last hour. Nice job Naruto. You did well for an academy student Guy stopped his enthusiastic comments as he looked at Naruto who was not moving on the ground. Guy became worried. Perhaps I've gone too far. Guy whispered to himself as he arrived and looked down at Naruto. Naruto, are you alright? Guy asked Naruto who remained silent. Guy began to panic. Oh no. If Lord Hokage finds out about this. I'm gonna die. Guy thought dramatically. He became confused as Naruto started chuckling to himself. Chuckling turned to laughing as Naruto laughed loudly while still laying on the ground. Ha 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 Naruto laughed happily as he rolled over to look at the sky. Guy looked at Naruto with a surprised expression. That was kinda fun. Thanks for forcing me to exercise, bushy brows. I haven't been this tired from training in ages. Naruto stood up and grinned broadly at Guy. 
I gotta go now. I'm very hungry and I'm craving ramen. Before I go, can we be friends? Naruto asked Guy. Naruto what kind of stupid question is that? Guy looked down at the ground while having a dark shadow cover his eyes. Naruto frowned. So Bushy Brows also hates me too huh? Why did he act so happy around me? At least I tried. Naruto mused. Yuzumaki Naruto from the second we met. I've already decided that you were going to be my friend. I declared happily, surprising Naruto and making him jump around happily. Thank you so much I'll see you tomorrow. Then Guy sensei bye bye Naruto waved happily as he ran away from Guy who looked at the blonde with a grin on his face. When Naruto was gone, Guy sighed sadly and shook his head. He must have had a pretty hard life huh? If I can tell the difference between a monster and a human, why couldn't everyone? It's a shame I couldn't do more to help. But I could now. Guy punched his palm and got fired up. Alright I've decided from now on, with the power of youth, I will help Naruto with whatever troubles he encounters to start, I will first do 1000, one armed handstand push ups let's go slurp. This is amazing. Naruto declared as he slurped down the Maizo Raymond. Currently, Naruto was eating lunch at a Chiraka Raymond, a Raymond restaurant in Kanahagakur. Although it is quite small and has an unassuming appearance, Ichiraku Raymon has always been popular with Kanoha's villagers because of Tuchi's, the owner of the shop's strong commitment to taste, giving the Raymon an almost artistic quality. Like any Raymon establishment, Ichiraku Raymon offers various toppings, such as char siu and boiled eggs. Ichiraku Raymon is Naruto's favorite dining establishment. He eats there during lunch and dinner. It is also the only establishment in Kanoha that allowed him to dine in. Tsuchi and his daughter, Aim, were among the few people in Kanoha not to treat Naruto with animosity, which Naruto was extremely grateful for. Look at you Naruto, you've already eaten 10 bowls. Tsuchi commented with a hearty laugh. Naruto grinned as he slurped down the miso soup. I was doing very hard training today. Naruto explained to him. Tsuchi nodded. Keep up the good work Naruto. Someday you will accomplish your dream of becoming Hokage. Tsuchi replied confidently, making Naruto smile warmly at him. Tuchi and his daughter Aim are probably the only people in this village that believe that he could become Hokage. You got it, old man Tuchi. Naruto replied with a broad grin on his face. Someone arrived and knelt in front of him. She is Aim, Tuchi's daughter. Aim is a slender girl with long dark brown hair and large black eyes, plus fair skin. She wears a white robe with the sleeves folded, a sort of dark blue apron with ribbon ties at the top, and a bright white bandana. Ayo Naruto, look at you. You got your mouth and clothes dirty with the way you eat again. Girls won't like that you know. Aim scolded as she wiped Naruto's mouth with a cloth. Naruto laughed. Where's the fun in eating quietly? I think slipping Raymond is the perfect way of showing how good this Raymond is. Naruto replied confidently, making Aim giggle. He never learns does he? She thought. Whatever you say, Naruto. But how are you going to pay for all of this? Aim asked him while handing him the bill. Naruto gulped as he read the cost of his meal. Oh oh crap dee, did you guys increase the prices or something? Naruto whispered to himself. Aim shook her head. Nope, it always been 60 ryo per bowl. You ate 10 bowls so you owe us 600 ryo. Aim replied. The ryo is the currency used in the Naruto world. It is based on an old Japanese gold coin that was used in Japan before the Meiji period. The exchange rate of one ryo is 10 yen. I don't have that much money sorry Aim ni chan. Naruto whispered sadly. Even though Naruto receives monthly income from the village in order to afford daily necessities, it was barely enough to pay his rent, let alone afford this meal. He's surviving off of cup Raymond. Oh Naruto Aim whispered while caressing his head gently. Tuchi frowned sadly at Naruto's words. Can these people see that he's just a child? Tuchi thought before patting Naruto's back. Don't worry Naruto, this meal is on the house. Tuchi assured him. Naruto looked at him with a shocked expression. No. I can't accept that. You did all that hard work cooking that ramen, and then you just give it out for free like that, how's that okay for you? Naruto argued with him, making Tuchi smile in amusement and raise an eyebrow at him. Well, do you have a better suggestion, Naruto? He asked Naruto. Naruto did not know what came over him when he opened his mouth to say his next sentence. I'll work here for a while. I'm a hard worker I promise I'll work so I can pay that meal off. And in EE the next day I hate that stupid academy. What's the point of learning calculations and history when we're gonna be fighting out there all the time? Naruto grumbled as he made his way towards the ninja academy, where prospective ninja are trained, and where official ninja receive their assignments. It was founded by Taburama Senju, the second hokage out of military necessity. Besides, the teachers always kick me out of class for no fucking reason. He mumbled sadly. Naruto wasn't stupid, he knew the teachers were intentionally holding him back. They handed him false information and lied to make it seem it was true. 
they handed him faulty gear and sometimes kicked him out of classes, while his classmates were probably learning a bunch of stuff that was useful for being a shinobi. Iruka-sensei is the only nice person there. He whispered. Killing intent resistance. Level 5 your own killing intent is 10% stronger. You are also able to ignore 10% of others killing intent. Naruto looked up and saw that he arrived at the academy. The academy is quite large and is comprised of several buildings which were erected over time. The building can be identified by the tree in front of it, which has a swing on it, and more so, by the giant sign with the kanji for fire on it. Along with being a school, it is also the area where the Hokage's office is located, which is where missions are dispatched, and the day-to-day -day running of the village takes place. Naruto ignored the scornful looks he received from the parents dropping off their children at the academy and the teachers themselves. The only thing they're useful for is leveling up his culling intent resistance skill. Naruto silently made his way to the classroom and opened the sliding door to enter. Classrooms in the academy are large and have high ceilings, based on a theory that larger classrooms lead to expansive education, expanding even to the blackboard itself. In front of the blackboard is a podium, situated far from the students' desks, and put in a position where the teacher can view everyone at once. Academy students make up the student body of the academy, where they are trained and prepared for life as a shinobi. They are not an actual part of a shinobi force, as they are still in the process of mastering the very basics of the ninja lifestyle. However, they can be conscripted as part of the war potential in times of emergency. Academy students spend their time honing the various skills they are required to have, and undergoing various tests and exams, to see how they progress. Besides ordinary school subjects such as history and mathematics, they are taught the basics of ninjutsu, tijutsu, and also jinjutsu. This includes learning about chakra and how to control it, tactics, hand seals, they are taken through the handling of ninja weapons and tools, like shuriken and kunai, learning how to throw and wield them through target practice. They also learn several Lee rank techniques, such as the clone technique and the transformation technique. They are also trained in working both individually and in teams. Currently, there were only a few students in the classroom right now. Naruto was surprised when he realized that he was early to class, which was a very rare thing for him to do. There were three people in the class right now. Two of them were his friends, while the other was his eternal rival whose guts he hated. His rival was a girl named Suzuki Chiha. She has black eyes and spiky black hair with a blue tint. Her hair is long and has hung over her face as bangs since she was a child. Suzuki is considered the most beautiful by all boys and even some girls near her age. Suzuki wears a navy blue, short sleeve shirt with a high collar, white shorts and white arm warmers. Ice princess indeed. Naruto thought while looking at her cold and uninterested expression. He looked at the other two of his classmates and grinned happily at them. They were his best friends, Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akamichi. Shikamaru has narrow brown eyes, and a typical expression suggesting he is either bored or irritated. He has shoulder-length black hair tied in a spiky ponytail. He wears a short sleeve gray jacket with green-edged sleeves, and the rudimentary Nara clan symbol on the back, under which is a green line mesh armor t-shirt. Shikamaru is a part of the Nara clan, who are known for tending deer and their ability to manipulate shadows through the use of yin release. Choji has a rotund build and markings on his cheeks in the form of swirls. He has spiky, light brown hair that sticks upward. He donned a green, short-sleeved Hayori with a long, white scarf over a light green shirt, with the kanji for food on it. He also wore black shorts, hoop earrings, and bandages around his legs and forearms. Choji is a part of the Akamichi clan, which is one of the four noble clans of Kanahagakur. Many of their clan's techniques revolve around the manipulation of their body weight and size, through the use of Yang release. It has had 15 family heads with Choji's father, Choza being the 15th. Choji is slated to become the 16th head. Naruto grinned as he went and sat beside Shikamaru who had his head on the table and was sleeping soundly. Choji was sitting on Shikamaru's ride and eating chips. Hey guys. Naruto greeted them with a grin on his face. Shikamaru hummed weakly and looked at Naruto. Oh hey Naruto. Shikamaru greeted lazily. Choji waved at Naruto. Morning, Naruto. Want a chip? It's barbecue flavored. Choji offered while holding out his bag of chips. Naruto thanked him and reached into the bag. He took out some chips and enjoyed them with Choji. You're pretty early today, Naruto. Why is that? Shikamaru commented. What's wrong with me being early, huh? Naruto asked him with a deadpan expression. Shikamaru shook his head. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a rare occurrence, you being on time for once. Shikamaru replied with a smirk on his face. Naruto pouted. Well, why are you early Shikamaru? Naruto asked him. Shikamaru sighed. When your mom nags you to wake up, the only solution to stop it is to wake up. Troublesome woman. 
Shikamaru grumbled, making Naruto and Choji chuckle at his misery. I saw you running around Kanoha yesterday while carrying a big backpack. What happened? Choji asked as he continued eating his chips. I'm working as a delivery man for a Chiraka Raymon now, so that I could pay off the debt I owe them. Which is? Shikamaru looks at him with a curious eyebrow raised. Naruto looked down with a gloomy aura around him. I can't pay for the 10 bowls of Raymon I ate there yesterday, so I volunteered to work for them to pay it off. Naruto explained. Shikamaru smirked, while Choji laughed to himself, finding Naruto's misery amusing. You should really consider getting a job, Naruto. At least one that can pay your daily expenses until you become a genin and take missions with your team. Shikamaru suggested. Naruto sighed and shook his head. You two and Kiba have seen how the villagers treat me, what shop would accept me as their employee? Naruto asked them. You already volunteered to work for a Chiraka Raymon. Why not apply to become an actual employee of their establishment? Shikamaru suggested. Hey, that's a great idea. You're a genius, Shikamaru. That way I can get extra cash without having to wait for the monthly payments. Naruto cheered loudly. Shikamaru snorted. Geez, do I have to think for everything. You're so troublesome, Naruto. Shikamaru grumbled and went back to sleep. Naruto sighed. Shikamaru's laziness is gonna get him killed one day. He thought as he started talking to Choji. It wasn't long when the class was starting to get filled with academy students. Among the students were Kiba Inuzuka of the Inuzuka clan, a family of shinobi in Kanahagakur, known for their use of Ninkan as fighting companions, and are easily identified by the distinctive red fang markings on their cheeks. Kiba's personality and fighting style is further complemented by his wild appearance as, while clearly human, he has several physical traits more akin to animals. Like most of his clan, he has messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth, and nails that he can change into claws. He also has the distinctive red fang markings of the Inuzuka clan on his cheeks. Kiba's attire consisted of dark grayish pants reaching to his calves, and a gray, headed fur-lined coat, with the hut usually placed on his head, over an apparent plate of armor and fishnet undershirt. He also wears blue sandals. What's up Naruto? You're early today. Kiba smirked at Naruto, who glared back at him. Hello to you two, dog breath. Ready to get beat down in today's sparring match. Naruto reported to him with a smirk on his own. Kiba clenched his fists and growled at him. I should be saying that to you everyone, sit down, settle down everyone. Today we will be learning about the start, the battles and the end of the first shinobi world war. The instructor of Naruto's class, Uruka Yumino declared while walking to the front of the class. The chattering died down as Naruto prepared to sleep. Uruka is a man of average height and build. He has brown hair that he keeps in a ponytail, dark eyes and a scar that runs across the bridge of his nose which he has had since his youth. He wears the standard Kanoha Shinobi outfit, complete with forehead protector, sandals, and flak jacket. His sleeves are also rolled up about one-fourth way. The First Shinobi World War was the first major conflict to occur among the five great shinobi countries. The war's outbreak plunged the world into a chaos not seen since the end of the Warring States period, for which reason there are very few records about the war. Uruka started explaining. In the lead-up to the war, Kanoha's first Hokage, Hashirama Senju, distributed the tailed beasts to the other hidden villages, something that was discussed and agreed upon at the first ever cage summit. Hearing the word Hokage and Hashirama Senju, Naruto perked up and paid attention to the class. The only thing Naruto excelled at in history was knowledge about whom the cages of the five great shinobi countries were. He admired them for their strength and leadership skills, and hoped that one day he could be just as powerful as they were. Lord First and his fellow cage hoped that dividing the tailed beasts among their villages would create a power balance, thus establishing peace between them. Although this did bring an end to smaller wars, conflicts of the era began to escalate, and Lord First ultimately died in battle. His successor as Hokage, Taburama Senju, attempted to continue Hashirama's pursuit of peace, but even his efforts could not stop the beginning of the First Shinobi World War. Lord Second would go on to die during the war, killed in battle with Kamagakur's Kinkaku force, he acted as a decoy, so that his subordinates could escape. Before he died, Taburama appointed one of his students, Hiruzen Suratobi, to be the next Hokage. Does anyone have any questions? Me? Ah, Sakura. Please stand up and tell us what your question is. Iruka sensei I want to ask about the battles that changed the tide of the war. The lesson went on, with Naruto surprisingly managing to not fall asleep, due to hearing a lot of information about the cages of the five great shinobi countries that he didn't know. Shikamaru, already knowing all of these things was fast asleep while sitting beside Naruto. The blonde ignored him and paid attention to Iruka's lesson. It seems like Naruto is paying attention today. Let's see if he can answer this. Iruka thought before pointing at Naruto. 
Naruto, answer this question for me. What Keke Genkai is Lord First famous for? Naruka asked as Naruto stood up. Keke Genkai are DNA anomalies that allow their wielders to use unique techniques. The Keke Genkai's name describes both the anomaly and the resulting technique. Most Keke Genkai are passed down between generations of a clan, an exception being Hashirama's wood release. Likewise, most individuals with Keke Genkai only inherit one Keke Genkai, however this is not always the case. Ah it's wood release, right? Naruto answered nervously. He has a bad experience with answering questions because most of the time, Naruka would call him up to answer questions, while he was fast asleep like Shikamaru was. Correct. Let's see if you can keep it up. Name one jutsu that Lord Second created. Naruka asked while having a smile on his face. Naruto hummed softly as he thought about an answer. He created the Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto answered confidently, gaining more confidence after he got the first question right. Naruka smiled and nodded. Correct again. Last question, what is the fourth Hokage's nickname? Yellow Flash Naruto answered instantly with a big grin on his face. Out of all the Hokage he admired, the fourth was the one he admired the most. He was the fastest person in the whole world, being able to outspeed A who is currently the fourth Rekage of Kumagakur. Naruka smiled white in a bunch, hearing Naruto's answer. Great job, Naruto. You got it right. Give it up for Naruto, everybody. Naruka declared as most of Naruto's classmates started clapping their hands. Naruto laughed while having an embarrassed blush on his face. It's not a usual thing that he gets applauded by everyone like this. After the applauding calmed down, Naruto sat down and the lesson continued. This is kind of fun, answering questions you know the answer to. Naruto thought to himself as he tried to focus on the rest of the history lesson. Damn it, I thought today was sparring day. Naruto grumbled as he sat down with the rest of his classmates. After they took a break, they were then guided to an empty room to start their lesson on chakra control. Sparring classes are next week, Naruto. This week we're focusing on chakra control. Shikamaru mumbled lazily, making the blonde-haired child groan. Alright, class, you know the drill. But for those who need a refresh on what we're doing, this is the leaf concentration practice. This training method is done by placing a leaf over your forehead, and then you direct all your chakra onto the leaf, using it as a focal point. This exercise is a way to teach you kids how to control your chakra more effectively. However, the true purpose of the exercise is actually to hone the individual's concentration, and to keep their mind from becoming distracted. Remember, only those who have worked hard on their ability to concentrate can become excellent shinobi. Naruka added with a serious expression on his face. Naruto sighed and rubbed his face. He sucked at doing these kinds of things. It was so hard to control his chakra. Hey Shikamaru, what's chakra again? Naruto asked Shikamaru, who palmed his face. You should really come to class more, man. Why do you always want to be troublesome and skip the classes that teach the important stuff? Shikamaru wondered. Because the teachers kicked me out of the class, that's why. Naruto thought to himself. Shikamaru sighed. Fine, I'll tell you. But I'm not repeating myself, so you better pay attention. Shikamaru started explaining what chakra was. Chakra is essential to even the most basic jutsu. Through various methods, the most common of which is hand seals, chakra can be controlled and manipulated to create an effect that would not be possible otherwise, such as walking on water, exhaling fire, or creating illusions. Chakra is ordinarily not visible to the unaided eye, unless it is highly concentrated or manifested in large amounts. Chakra has become a form of life energy that all individuals produce to some degree, those who run out of chakra will die. Produced within and manipulated by organs such as the heart, the energy circulates throughout the body in a network called the chakra pathway system, which is similar to the cardiovascular system. Groups such as shinobi have learned to generate more chakra and release it outside their bodies, through pressure points called tinketsu, in order to perform jutsu. Chakra is created when two more primal energies, known collectively as one stamina are molded together. Physical energy is collected from each of the body's cells, and can be increased through training, stimulants, and exercise. Spiritual energy is derived from the mind's consciousness and can be increased through studying, meditation, and experience. These two energies becoming more powerful will in turn make the created chakra more powerful. Therefore, practicing a technique repeatedly will build up experience, increasing one's spiritual energy, and thus allowing more chakra to be created. As a result, the ninja is able to do that same technique with more power. This same cycle applies for physical energy, except the ninja needs to increase their endurance instead. At any given time, a ninja will have a maximum amount of chakra that they can form and use before it runs out, and they need to rest to replenish it. But practice this maximum can be increased, but to a certain extent as they are limited to the quantity and strength of chakra that their genetics grants them. 
Obviously Shikamaru didn't explain all of that theory stuff to him. He knew that Naruto was more of a tactile learner, and a remarkable one at that, he was able to learn better through executing a task, rather than understanding the theory of it. Shikamaru just simplified it to the extreme and used some analogies to make Naruto understand it clearly. So that's what chakra is. How the hell is this leaf exercise gonna help me? Naruto's wondered. Shikamaru sighed and explained why chakra control is important to a shinobi. Because chakra takes time and a great deal of training to gradually build up, the key to its use is not actually having large amounts of chakra, but instead being able to sufficiently control and conserve it. This is called chakra control. In order to have good chakra control, a ninja should only mold as much chakra as they need to perform a given ability. If they mold more chakra than is needed, the excess chakra is wasted and they will tire out faster from its loss. If they don't mold enough chakra, a technique will not be performed effectively, if at all, likely creating problems in a combat situation. Because chakra consists in part of spiritual energy, the user is more easily able to mold the correct amount of chakra by remaining calm and focused. You understand now, Naruto. Shikamaru asked lazily after dumbing down the theory to the extreme once again, so that Naruto's single brain cell could understand him. Yeah, I do. Thanks for explaining. This exercise is gonna help me get stronger. And then I'm gonna be able to for more powerful jutsu in no time. Let's start troublesome blonde Naruto hummed while narrowing his eyes at the leaf on his forehead. He was channeling his chakra onto the leaf, using it as a focal point. Naruto was super bored. This is it he asked loudly. Shikamaru yawned while he also had a leaf on his forehead. Yeah, this is it. Shikamaru replied to him casually. Naruto looked at Shikamaru with a pout on his face. Surely there's more to this. Naruto asked him. Shikamaru sighed. No, there's not. And be quiet or sensei will kick us out of the class. Shikamaru warned as Naruto snorted and started grumbling to himself. There was silence around the class for a few minutes, everyone was concentrating on directing all their chakra onto the leaf. Even Satsuki who also finds this exercise boring like most of the class do, was also focusing on it. Hey, here's an idea you can work on Shikamaru whispered. Even thought he didn't look like it, the Nara was in deep thought for a couple of minutes. Naruto immediately directed all of his attention at him, the leaf on his forehead immediately fell onto the floor. Sensei said that the true purpose of the exercise is hone the individual's concentration, and to keep their mind from becoming distracted. So what if Shikamaru pointed at Naruto? You do some kind of physical exercise while doing the leaf concentration practice at the same time. Shikamaru suggested. Naruto tilted his head in confusion as he picked up the fallen leaf. Why should I? Naruto asked. You are able to easily able to mold the correct amount of chakra simply by remaining calm and focused. So doing a stressful physical exercise like push-ups while doing the leaf exercise at the same time, can raise your concentration levels to a higher level. Shikamaru explained like it was the simplest thing in the world. Naruto grinned broadly, perhaps this seemingly boring exercise is useful for something after all. Sweet. Let's do it together. Naruto cheered loudly. Shikamaru raised a brow at him. I never said I would do this with you, Naruto. It's too troublesome. Shikamaru argued with a small smirk on his face. Naruto deadpanned him. Come on Shika, you can get some exercise in and find out if this works. It's not troublesome, it's convenient. Naruto argued back. Shikamaru sighed. You and you talk no jutsu. Fine, but don't expect me to keep up with that endurance of yours. Shikamaru grumbled. Naruto smirked as he and Shikamaru got into the push-up position. They were directing all of their chakra to the leaf stuck on their foreheads. They also had serious expressions on their faces. Iruka, who was giving advice to some of the students, stopped and turned towards the two. There was chattering amongst the students as they all stared at Shikamaru and Naruto, who were doing something weird. Even Suzuki found interest in what they were doing and looked at them with that cold gaze of hers. Iruka-sensei. Why aren't you punishing them? Sakura screeched while pointing at the two troublemakers. Sakura has fair skin, green eyes, and long pink hair. She wore her hair as bangs and has a large forehead. Due to this, some of her classmates call her forehead girl. Sakura wears a red kippa dress at various times, either with or without short sleeves, with slits along the sides, accompanied by a zipper and white circular designs. She also wears tight dark green bike shorts with a shuriken holster around her right thigh and blue sandals. Wait a moment, Sakura. Let's see what they're doing first. Iruka replied calmly. Sakura huffed and looked at the Naruto and Shikamaru who were adjusting their push-up positions. Men. She grumbled while shaking her head. Naruto and Shikamaru started doing push-ups while attempting to also concentrate their chakra to the leaf on their foreheads. Shit. Naruto cursed as he lost concentration by being too focused on the push-ups. 
The leaf slowly fell onto the ground. He stopped his push-ups and put the leaf back onto his forehead. He then resumed doing his push-ups. Leaf Concentration Practice Level 2 A way to teach students how to control their chakra more effectively. All Jutsu uses 1% less chakra. Full control over 1% of your chakra damn it. Naruto cursed as the leaf fell down again on his 25th push-up. Shikamaru was having a much better time than him due to him having way less chakra to work on. His poor control of his chakra was offset by his sheer reserves, which was more than most jonin in Kanoha. But he could feel it getting better as he kept doing the push-ups. Ugh. What a drag Shikamaru grumbled as he slumped onto the ground on his 50th push-up. The large crowd of Naruto's classmates gathering around the two start cheering Naruto on as he kept doing his push-ups without showing signs of exhaustion. Somehow, Naruto doesn't feel sore at all from all of the extreme physical exercises he did with Guy yesterday. He felt that he got a little bit stronger from that bit of physical exertion. Originally, doing 100 push-ups seemed impossible to him. But now, Naruto felt that it was within his reach, he just needed to be consistent. Holy crap, Naruto's already at 80 push-ups already. Choji shouted in shock. Sakura was in disbelief. Was Naruto, the dead last always this physically strong? Suzuki wasn't surprised. He declared that they were rivals after all. Rivals are supposed to one-up each other. Though inside she felt a little jealous that he had already overtaken the amount of push-ups she could do by two times. And Naruto Kei-kun, a girl whispered wild bunches up in the crowd of students watching Naruto's amazing show of strength. She is not a Hayuga. She was formerly the heiress of the Hayuga clan, but she lost a position upon being deemed unsuited for the responsibilities of leading the clan. Hinata is a slender girl of fair complexion who, as a Hayuga, her most distinguishing trait is the Byakugan, giving her featureless lavender eyes. She has dark blue hair that she keeps in a heim cut. Her hair is cut just above her forehead, akin to a bowl cut with chin-length strands framing her face. Hinata usually wears a cream-colored hooded jacket with a fire symbol on the upper sleeves and fur around the cuffs and hem. She also wears navy blue pants. And lastly, she has a massive crush on Naruto. But Naruto being Naruto, was too dense to even notice it. But it was also Hinata's fault a little. Her self-confidence is zero to none, and it made her even more bashful because she gained so little faith in herself and opinions. She is kind, always thinking of others more than for herself, caring for their feelings and well-being. She doesn't like being confrontational for any reason. This led to her being meek or timid to others, as her overwhelming kindness can render her unable to respond or act for fear of offending somebody. Jigo and Naruto Kei-kun why you see can do it, Hinata whispered shyly when she saw Naruto struggling a lot when he reached his 85th push-up. Hinata widened her eyes in shock as Naruto suddenly grinned broadly. Thanks Hinata. Naruto replied, making her blush vividly and faint on the spot. He regained his concentration on letting the leaf stick to his forehead. He then gained a second wind and started speeding up his push-ups. The cheering got louder. Sakura widened her eyes and her jaw dropped to the ground as Naruto zoomed past 100 push-ups and was now on the way to completing 120 of them. And GGGH. Naruto grunted as he tried to complete another push-up, but his body finally ran out of juice, and he slumped onto the ground exhausted as hell. H how much W was it sensei? Sakura stuttered out a question. Naruka was looking at Naruto with an impressed expression, he snapped out of it, and opened his mouth to answer Sakura's question. 125 push-ups, and the leaf only fell down twice. Naruka revealed. Naruto smirked to himself as he looked at the floating screen in front of him. Leaf concentration practice. Level 5 a way to teach students how to control their chakra more effectively. Jutsu uses 2.5% less chakra. Full control over 1.5% of your chakra most of the crowd clapped their hands and cheered loudly at Naruto. Suzuki gritted her teeth and walked away from the crowd. You got lucky today, Naruto. I won't lose to the likes of you. I will stand on top. I will avenge my clan and kill you, Itachi. Suzuki vowed to herself. For her part, Sasuke thought little of Naruto, and was usually annoyed by the blonde's outbursts, but would, at times, secretly smile at how hard Naruto worked because of her. Ironically, for all the attention she received, Naruto was the only person among her peers who understood Satsuki due to the painful experiences she had. Damn, you really went the extra mile there Naruto. Shikamaru mumbled as he pulled Naruto up. Naruto laughed. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? Naruto asked Shikamaru who shrugged. A little bit I guess, but it was still a drag though. Yeah, whatever you say Shika. You did a great job today, Naruto. Naruka commented as he and Naruto were walking through the bustling streets of Kanoha. Naruto had a meeting with the Hokage and Naruka offered to walk with him. Naruto grinned at him. Thanks Naruka-sensei. 
he replied, feeling happy that he was getting praise from his strict but kind-hearted instructor. But did you realize what you and Shikamaru did today? Iruka asked him. Naruto sighed and shook his head. And here comes the bad news. He thought before opening his mouth to speak. Yeah, we were not following your orders during the chakra control lesson. Naruto replied. Iruka chuckled and nodded. That you two did. But if it weren't for you two not following my orders, you two wouldn't have created the advanced version of the leaf concentration practice in class. Iruka revealed. Wait we did Naruto looked at Iruka in disbelief. Iruka smiled and nodded. Yes you did, Naruto. You and Shikamaru's discovered that you can hone your concentration better by being doing exercises, since it is stressful to the mind and body. Iruka explained. Naruto cheered loudly. Yay that's one more step to becoming Hokage he declared. Iruka chuckled at the blonde. Naruto, you should keep your voice down. We're almost at the Hokage's office now. Iruka warned him. Naruto hummed in response as they walked into the building. They greeted the receptionist who winked at Naruto before giving him a bag full of candy. Naruto grinned and thanked her, receiving a giggle and a head pat in return. Iruka and Naruto walked up some stairs before arriving in front of a wooden double door that has the Hokage's office inside of it. Alright Naruto, treat Lord Third with respect. See you at tomorrow's class. Iruka advised Naruto who waved back at him. By Iruka sensei Naruto shouted at Iruka who waved back as he walked down the stairs. Naruto immediately pushed open the door to the Hokage's office. The Hokage's office is a large, somewhat oval room, usually filled with stacks of unfinished paperwork. Behind the Hokage's desk is a large window through which the Hokage can survey the entire village. On the desk itself is a stylized kanji for shadow, followed by the symbol of the village. Gramsci shouted cheerfully, gaining the person's attention. That person is here is in Saratobi, the third Hokage of Kanahagakur. A disciple of the village's two previous Hokage, Hiruzen was a powerful ninja, hailed as a god of shinobi like Hashirama, the first Hokage when he was alive. His skin is light, his hair is gray, his face is gaunter, and he has the wrinkles and liver spots of old age. He had a single line running vertically onto the outer corners of each eye, which stretched down into his face as he aged until they reached his cheeks. Hiruzen wears the official uniform the customary hat and Hayori with a red, full-length kimono that is tied using a white sash. He often smokes during his spare time. Ah, Naruto. Good to see you. How are you doing? Here's an ass with a warm smile. Naruto sat on a chair and sighed. Not good Gramps. I don't have any money left. The apartment is gonna collapse and me and my clothes smell like shit. Naruto replied bluntly. Here's an stayed silent. I always wondered why you gave me a shitty apartment and little to no money every month Gramps. Do you hate me like the villagers do too? Naruto asked Here's an while looking into his eyes. Hiruzen whitened his eyes in shock. What? I would never. Hiruzen shouted. Naruto jet him. Tell that to my house. Naruto grumbled. Hiruzen sighed and rubbed his head, appearing to be in deep thought now. Naruto stayed silent while he looked around the office. He looked at a full body picture of the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze hanging on the wall. It was a full body picture that was taken when Minato was inaugurated as Hokage. Minato was a tall, fair skinned man. He has blue eyes and spiky blonde hair. Minato also had jaw-length bangs framing either side of his face. Minato was considered to be very handsome as many girls became infatuated with him. In the picture, Minato was wearing his normal attire consisted of a standard Kanohi uniform with two bands on both of his sleeves, a green flak jacket, blue forehead protector, and blue sandals. He was also wearing a short-sleeved long white Hayori over his normal attire, closed in the front by a thin orange rope. The Hayori was decorated by red flame-like motifs on the edges, with the kanji for fourth hookage written vertically down the back. Naruto kept staring into Minato's blue eyes. He noticed that it looked exactly identical to his blue eyes. He died fighting the Kayubi. Question is, how the hell did he even kill that fox? There are no records detailing the battle at all. Naruto mused. He was snapped out of his musings by hears and clearing his throat. Naruto, I might have a solution. You can work as a deliveryman of Kanoha. But instead of delivering letters to the villagers, you will be delivering weapons or food supplies to warehouses, even delivering documents. Hiruzen explained as Naruto listened to him attentively. The pay is the same amount as a D-rank assigned to Genin fresh from the academy, which is between 5,000 and 50,000 Ryo. The amount you will receive is determined by how difficult that task was. Hiruzen explained. So Naruto, do you accept yes? Naruto answered with a determined expression. Naruto was determined to get himself out of that dump, even if he had to work overtime. Hiruzen smiled, but that smile turned into a frown quickly. Naruto, I'm so sorry for letting you live like that. I don't deserve forgiveness. 
Hiruzen bowed his head deeply, feeling ashamed for himself. I failed you, Minato, Kashina. I broke our promise. I cannot face you too now. Hiruzen thought to himself as Naruto looked at his surrogate grandfather with a shocked expression. Gee Gramps. Naruto whispered. Hiruzen kept bowing, not saying a word. Gramps, I forgive you. Now how about we just forget about it and move forward? Naruto suggested. Hiruzen looked at Naruto with a shocked expression. Jay just like that. He muttered. Naruto grinned at him. Treat it as a way to start redeeming yourself, Gramps. You already did a lot by offering me a job. Naruto replied before looking at the clock. Oh crap. I gotta go meet with Bushy Brows Naruto cursed before jumping of his seat. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow at the nickname. Bushy Brows. Is he talking about Guy? Hiruzen thought before opening the drawer on his desk and start scrambling to look for something. Wait. Naruto. Hiruzen called Naruto, who was about to dash out of the office. Naruto turned around and caught something Hiruzen threw at him. What's this scramps? Naruto asked curiously. Open it when you're training. Hiruzen requested. Naruto nodded and kept the scroll into his shuriken holster. Bye Gramps see you soon Naruto waved happily at Hiruzen, who smiled and waved back. Soon after, Naruto left the Hokage's office. Hiruzen sighed and looked at the picture of Minato. Minato, I'm getting too old for this. Why did you have to use the jutsu that day? Is this your punishment for me for not acting on that promise? The body flicker technique, a high speed movement technique. Naruto whispered as he is sitting on a big rock and reading the scroll Hiruzen gave him. By using the body flicker technique, a ninja can move short to long distances at an almost untraceable speed. To an observer, it appears as if the user has teleported. It is accomplished by using chakra to temporarily vitalize the body and move at extreme speeds. The amount of chakra required depends on the overall distance and elevation between the user and the intended destination. The puff of smoke is occasionally used to disguise the user's movements. Other elements or substances can be used instead to distract the opponent. Damn, where's Shikamaru where you need him? I don't understand this theory stuff unless someone shows it to me or teach me to do it. Naruto whispered. Good afternoon Naruto. Naruto smiled and looked up at Guy who was rushing towards him by running with his hands. The blonde put away the scroll back into his shuriken holster and waited for Guy to stop. Guy launched himself up to the air and did multiple flips before landing on the ground gracefully. Naruto clapped his hands in amazement. Haha <laughs> Guy grinned broadly, doing the nice guy pose. Naruto grinned back at him. So Naruto, are you ready to push yourself and break your limits with the flames of youth behind you again? Guy asked him. Naruto cracked his knuckles and smirked at Guy. You betcha. What are we gonna do today? The same as yesterday. But if you want to add more to it. You're welcome to do so alright let's start with the push-ups. I shall do them with you hand seals. Level 2 they are used to perform many ninjutsu, jinjutsu, and other secret arts other than tojutsu. They are designed to aid people in properly summoning and molding chakra necessary to perform a technique. There are different sequences of hand seals for every technique, requiring memorization. Hand seal speed increased by 4%, this is a skill too. Naruto muttered as he was back at his dump of a whole man was sitting on his small single bed. Well, I'm exhausted right now. So I guess I can do this before I go to sleep. Naruto decided before running through all 12 basic seals repeatedly, each one named after an animal of the Chinese zodiac. The 12 seals are rat, ox, tiger, hare, dragon, snake, horse, ram, monkey, bird, dog and lastly boar. Naruto repeated this process for about 10 minutes, pushing himself like he did when he did those exercises with Guy. Naruto stopped after 10 minutes and laid on the bed. He stared at the floating screen for one last time before he fell asleep. Hand Seals Level 4 Hand Seals speed increased by 8% Naruto woke up very early today. It was currently 5 am, 3 hours and a half before class in the academy starts. Naruto can go back to sleep now since he was wide awake and was ready to take on the whole world. Naruto decided to practice and increase the level of his skills, after he took a bath and ate his breakfast which was a cup of cup ramen. Hand Seals Level 6 Hand Seals speed increased by 12%, and my hands are now tired. Naruto mumbled as he has been practicing to increase the speed of his hand seals for 15 minutes now. He looked around the place. It was dirty. There was dust and Raymond cups littered everywhere, and the trash wasn't taken out too. If he was going to be living in this dump for some time, he had to at least make it a little more presentable for his own sanity. Naruto decided to clean up the house before going to school. He took the broom and dustpan before he started sweeping the dust off the floor. After finishing that, he dumped the dust-filled dustpan into the rubbish bin. He then grabbed a large garbage bag and started filing it with empty Raymond cups. When that was done, Naruto went outside his home with two garbage bags in hand. 
He looked down and saw the large dumpster. Fortunately, the dumpster's cover was open. Naruto just simply threw the bags from where he was down into the dumpster. There was a large crash that followed when the bags landed in the dumpster. Naruto ignored it as he went back to his house to wash his hands. Naruto decided it was time to head to the academy. He started walking there, once again ignoring the gazes full of hatred and resentment directed at him. Killing Intent Resistance Level 7 Your own killing intent is 14% stronger. You are also able to ignore 14% of others' killing intent. He arrived and entered his classroom. Shikamaru, Choji and Satsuki were the only ones there just like yesterday. Naruto looked at Satsuki again. Strangely, she was staring at him intensely with a cold gaze. Naruto raised a brow and matched her gaze as they stared into each other's eyes for a few seconds. HNN Satsuki hummed before looked away from him and staring at the village outside of the window. Naruto snorted before sitting beside Shikamaru who was taking a nap like usual. What was that about? Shikamaru suddenly asked before making a grunting sound to sit up properly. I dunno, I didn't do anything to offend her did I? Naruto mumbled, clenching his fists, realizing that it was the same thing with the villagers. He didn't do anything and he knew he didn't, but why do they hate him for that? I'm pretty sure it's just how she usually acts like, Naruto. But maybe it's because of your stunt yesterday. Shikamaru theorized. Naruto snorted. If she wants to be able to do that too then she should train until she drops. It's just that simple but clearly her emo brain is too stupid to realize that. Naruto replied confidently. Suzuki heard it loud and clear. She barely resisted going over there to kick his ass. TCH. Idiot. Suzuki gritted her teeth and clenched her fists tightly. Shikamaru sighed and rubbed his face. So troublesome he grumbled as Choji took out another bag of chips. Naruto looked at them with a grin on his face. I got a job now. Gramps assigned me to be a delivery man. But instead of delivering letters, I deliver weapons, food supplies and super important documents to warehouses and the ninjas inside the village. Naruto stated happily. Really congress. Have some chips dude. Choji replied happily. Naruto grinned and reached into Choji's bag of chips. He took out a handful of chips and started enjoying them. You might be able to finally afford decent food and eat properly now. Shikamaru commented. Choji nodded. Even I know that having a ramen only diet is not good for the body. Meat, vegetables and rice would do just fine, instead of eating just cup ramen. I'm surprised you don't have malnutrition with that diet of yours. Choji pointed out. Naruto shrugged before smirking. What can I say guys? My body's very special. Naruto declared before laughing loudly. Suzuki rolled her eyes, hearing his bold statement. It's not special, it just gotten used to it. Choji commented bluntly, making Naruto instantly have a gloomy aura washing over him. Shikamaru smirked a little bit. The classroom started filling up with students. Sakura and her friend, Ino walked into the classroom arguing with each other. Ino Yamanaka of is a part of Kanahagakur's Yamanaka clan. The Yamanaka clan is a family of shinobi found in Kanahagakur. They specialize in mind-related techniques, and they own and run a flower shop in the village. They traditionally lead the Kanoha barrier team. The Yamanaka clan has a special relationship with the Akimichi and Nara clan. For generations, members of these three families have formed an Ino Shikacho trio named after the first part of the names of the members. Ino is a fair-skinned woman of average height with light blue eyes and long platinum blonde hair with bangs, framing the right side of her face. Her hair was hip-length and is tied into a high ponytail. Ino regularly wears a purple outfit consisting of a high-colored blouse and matching apron skirt. She sports this attire with bandages on her abdomen and legs, small hoop earrings, and white arm warmers. She and Sakura were friendly rivals fueled by competition for Suzuki's friendship. They even trade insults, with Ino as Ino Pig and Sakura as Forehead Girl. Naruto found it weird that the two wanted to be best friends with Suzuki, even though the Ichiha was a cold-hearted girl who wasn't interested in trivial matters such as friendship. But he wasn't one to judge. He just kept staring at Sakura, there was something about her that made Naruto attracted to her. Maybe it was because of how smart she was, or the way she carried herself or even how beautiful she was, though Ino would definitely disagree with that. Or maybe he was just a masochist, whenever he would have the chance to ask Sakura out for a date. The pink-haired beauty would bonk him in the head and walk away while scoffing. Naruto wasn't about to give up, he will steal her heart someday. What's one way to get through a girl's iron heart? A Chidori should do just fine. In his musings, Iruka entered the class and started the lesson. Naruto groaned as this lesson was about mathematics. Shikamaru sighed and immediately started taking a nap with Naruto following his actions. They got rudely awakened by Ruka, and they got detention after school as punishment. School didn't end after mathematics class as there was chakra control and ninjutsu class. 
Naruto and Shikamaru did the same stunt as yesterday. While they were doing push-ups while the classmates were sticking to just sitting and putting the leaf on their forehead, they had another person that joined them in their stunt. Huh. Naruto stopped his push-ups as he looked at the person who wanted to join them. He was surprised to see that it was Satsuki who joined. Satsuki looked at him with a cold expression. I tried it yesterday. Your methods proved effective, Naruto. Let's see who can do more right now. Satsuki challenged him. Naruto smirked back at her. Oh it's on Satsuki. But he warned, there's no way two can beat me in stamina. Naruto declared as he and Satsuki started doing push-ups at the same tempo. The whole class stopped what they were doing and started gathering around them again. Naruka sighed in defeat as his lesson was disrupted by Naruto and his antics once again. Satsuki's fanboys started cheering her on while booing Naruto. Kiba sighed as he spectated the competition. I get that she's pretty, but that's just flat out disgusting. Those sissies have a shrine and a holiday for her and everything. Kiba grumbled. Ino and Sakura were disgusted at the fanboys cheering for her. Seriously, do these boys really do think they have a chance with Satsuki? Sakura grumbled. Ino snorted. PFFT fat chance. I'm not Satsuki, but I think she'd go for someone that can think for themselves and is a person that is far more manly than these chumps. Ino replied. So who are you cheering for? Sakura asked her best friend which is also her rival. Ino smirked at her. Judging from his performance yesterday, I bet 100 Ryo Naruto wins. How about you, forehead girl? Ino asked, making sure to rub Sakura's nickname in. Sakura's left eye twitched. Then I'll be 100 Ryo richer by the time this is over. Ino pig. Suzuki lost the challenge. She had lost to Yuzumaki Naruto, the class clown, the dead last, the loser. Others might ask why was she reacting like this small harmless challenge meant everything to her, because it actually did. Her pride, the Chiha pride was damaged by the boy she thought had no hope in becoming a shinobi, and would stay a hopeless loser forever. Satsuki silently got up and exited the class with a dark shadow covering her whole face, preventing everyone from seeing her emotions. Naruto stared at Satsuki with a confused expression. Had he done something wrong again? He didn't understand why was she reacting like that. Don't say anything, Naruto. That's how women are, troublesome as always. Shikamaru whispered to him. His sentence went into Naruto's left ear and flew out from the other. I mean, I would be salty if I lost a challenge. Naruto thought, deciding to talk with Satsuki if he came across her. Naruka sighed and shook his head. Class, let's continue what we were doing. But what about Satsuki? One of Satsuki's fanboys asked him. Naruka resisted groaning loudly, her fanboys are really annoying him, and Naruka has a limit to controlling himself. Just give her some time, she'll come around eventually. Naruto and Shikamaru groaned. They were in detention. They were hoping that Aruka would forget about the detention he gave them, but the instructor would never forget about things like that. When I become Hokage, I will ban detention, Naruto declared loudly while he and Shikamaru were sitting all alone in an empty classroom. I hope that day will come soon. Shikamaru mumbled. Naruto then pointed at Shikamaru. And when I become Hokage, you'll be my chief aide. Believe it. Naruto declared with a broad grin on his face. That declaration surprised Shikamaru what I looked at him with a surprised expression. Hcha. Why me? Was the only thing Shikamaru could say. Naruto smirked. Don't tell me you don't know, Shika. You're smart as hell. Naruto's reply made Shikamaru sigh. If I am to be your chief aide when you become Hokage, then I'm gonna need a lot more skills than just being smart. I need to be well versed in politics, diplomacy, the inner workings of the village, and I also have to be strong enough to protect you if needed. Shikamaru explained, making Naruto hum in response. That's really a lot, Shika. But I'm sure with how smart you are, you'll be the best chief aide in history, believe it. Naruto said, making Shikamaru chuckle. There was a comfortable silence that followed. I'm not joking you know. Naruto mumbled suddenly, making Shikamaru look at him. Naruto looked at Shikamaru seriously. I'm not joking when I said I wanna be Hokage. You might think it is one, but I don't. I'm gonna be Hokage, so that everyone can acknowledge who Yuzumaki Naruto is. Naruto stated. Shikamaru patted Naruto's shoulder. No matter how troublesome it is, I will never take your word as a joke, Naruto. We're friends, after all. Shikamaru replied, making Naruto smile. No Shika, we're best friends. Naruto corrected while holding up his fist. Shikamaru smirked. You got damn right, we are. What should we do to pass the time, Shika? I got a shogi board in my bag. Wanna play? I don't know how, but sure. Don't worry, I'll teach you all about it. It's easy once you know the rules. I'll take your word for it. Bro said it was gonna be easy for me. Well, it ain't easy if I'm playing against an Dumbis. Naruto grumbled as he was walking home from the academy. Shogi. 
Level 1 chess played on a board of 81 squares with 40 pieces to the set. It's played by two persons on a board with pieces of varying powers, and the objective of the game is to checkmate the opposing king. Naruto walked into an alleyway so that he could get to his house faster. Suddenly, someone jumped down from a building and landed in front of him. Naruto widened his eyes as he instinctually took out a kunai from his shuriken holster. He looked at the person in front of him. Oh Naruto mumbled as he realized who landed in front of him. That person was an Anbu operative. The Anbu, short for Ansatsu Senjutsu Takushu Butai, Special Assassination and Tactical Squad, are covert operatives of capable ninja that are dispatched by their village leader. There were apparently no true ranks within the Anbu, team leadership and hierarchy seem to be based on merit and experience, and skill levels from Genin to Jonin are found in the Anbu. The leaders of the teams are called Squad Leader, a position held in high regard. Because of the darkness involved in an Anbu's career, one's personality determines their eligibility into the force, leading to exceptionally skilled shinobi whose personalities don't match the organization to be rejected. As early as the academy, accomplished children are scouted to eventually join. While recruiting, shinobi are handpicked by their village leader for their individual capabilities and special skills. Age, background, gender, or previous rank bear no significance in this decision. However, in tradition, Kanahagakure shinobi are not selected as Anbu, unless they are at least 13 years old. Once joined, they undergo training including studying of the human body, and begin wearing masks to conceal their identity, leading to them using code names to identify each other. Anbu nearly always make an appearance on important missions inside and in the vicinity of their village, but are mainly tasked with assassinations or disturbances in foreign countries. The assignments that they conduct to protect the village from exceptional threats include high-risk infiltration into enemy territory, dealing with extremely strong ninja, tracking, surveillance, interrogating enemy ninja to learn information in missions requiring specially trained ninja. Due to the often sensitive nature of their missions and the unique abilities they sometimes possess, Anbu are expected to destroy their bodies if they are too badly injured on a mission, so that they can't be captured. Konoha Anbu custom is to wear animal-style porcelain masks, with some opting for more menacing-looking creatures. The Anbu member standing in front of him was wearing an eagle mask. He has tall spiky brown hair, and wears the standard attire of a Konohagakure Anbu member with a sword strapped to his back. Eagle wordlessly handed Naruto a scroll. Naruto took it and looked at it. Before Naruto could ask Eagle about the contents of the scroll, the Anbu member already disappeared without a trace. Ah, right, body flicker jutsu. Naruto whispered before opening the scroll and reading the contents of it. In short, this was Naruto's first mission. He was to go to a shop called the Higurashi Weapons Store. There he will receive a large crate full of kunai, shuriken and sealing scrolls. He is to deliver them to a warehouse near the building where Kanahagakure Intelligence Division reside. Naruto didn't waste any more time and started dashing through the streets. Fortunately, the scroll included the location of the Higurashi Weapons Store. Naruto arrived in front of the weapons store. He entered it, preparing to be shouted at for unknown reasons. It never came. Huh. Naruto looked around the store with a confused expression. The store was what you would expect a weapons store to look like. There were katanas hanging on the wall, shuriken and kunai laid in open crates, flak jackets, mesh armor, and so much more clothing that was designed for a shinobi. Hey there. Naruto jumped as he looked at a girl standing behind the reception counter of the shop. Naruto was surprised at how young she was, she was probably the same age if not a year older than him. She is Tenten. Tenten is a Kanoichi and a member of Team Guy. Tenten has dark brown hair and grey eyes. She wears her hair in two Chinese style buns on her head with short fringe bangs framing her face. Tenten's outfits serve as a reference to Chinese culture. She wears a pink sleeveless kipao style blouse with red sleeve trimmings and yellow fastening buttons and dark green pants. A pouch is adjusted to her thigh, and her forehead protector and sandals are both blue. Hey, I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. I'm here to help deliver the crate of weapons. Naruto greeted Tenten enthusiastically. Tenten smiled back and nodded. I'm Tenten. Nice to meet you Naruto. Wait a moment while I prepare it for you. Tenten replied before going around the shop to fill up an empty crate. So Tenten, you're a Kanoichi right? Naruto asked, noticing the forehead protector wrapped around Tenten's forehead. Tenten nodded. Yo. I'm a genin, I'm a member of Team Guy also known as Team 3. Tenten replied. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Guy. Wait, you mean bushy brows Naruto shouted. Pfft ha 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 Tenten laughed loudly at the nickname Naruto gave Guy. Naruto laughed with her. Oh, finally someone said it. You should see my teammate Lee, he's a carbon copy of Guy Sensei. Tenten replied while wiping off some small tears of joy. Naruto grinned broadly at her. 
How do you know guy sensei anyways? Tenten asked him while continuing to pack up the crate. I just met him while I was training in a forest by myself. He gave me a training plan out of nowhere. Naruto explained, recounting his first meeting with the youthful Jonin. Let me guess, you chickened out. Tenten asked with a sly smile on her face. Naruto shook his head. Nah, I actually did it with him by my side motivating me. It's kind of fun actually. I never thought my body can do that much push-ups and run that far. Naruto replied, surprising Tenten. I've never met someone except for Lee who would call Guy Sensei's training fun. Tenten commented while shuddering a little. She sighed before handing Naruto the crate. Here you go Naruto. Drop it and you pay for it. Tenten warned, sending chills down Naruto's spine. Naruto nodded and grinned at her. Alright Tenten, see you soon. Maybe we can even train together someday. Naruto suggested. Tenten raised a brow. Is that your way of asking me out, Naruto? Tenten teased him, making Naruto blush and stutter incoherently. Tenten giggled before patting Naruto's head. Naruto pouted. He wished he was taller so that he could do the same to people shorter than him. I'm just joking with you. But I would like to have another training partner outside of my team. So sure, we can train together if I have time. Awesome. You won't regret it Tenten believe it, Naruto declared before rushing towards the exit. Tenten smiled and waved at him. Come back anytime if you need to resupply on shinobi equipment, see you soon Naruto by Tenten, the next day killing intent resistance. Level 9 your own killing intent is 18% stronger. You are also able to ignore 18% of others killing intent. It's improving slower and slower every day. I should really find new things to work on. Naruto whispered to himself as he entered the classroom. Naruto was now 5,000 Ryo richer. He kept all of that money in his cute froggy wallet. Naruto looked at Satsuki who was emo as always. Naruto remembered that he needed to talk with her about what happened yesterday. He wasn't sure if it's the right thing to do as he feared that Satsuki would lash out on him. But Naruto wasn't a coward and will never be one. He approached Satsuki with a small smile on his face as he sat beside her. Satsuki immediately glared at him, hating that he was invading her personal space. Naruto looked at her. Hey, I was wondering if we could talk about what happened yesterday. Naruto started the conversation. Satsuki narrowed her eyes at him. There is nothing to talk about. Satsuki replied with venom in her tone. Naruto huffed. There definitely is something to talk about with that attitude. Look, I get that you're salty because you lost to the loser of this class Naruto then frowned at her. If you lost, you just have to train harder to one-up me. We're rivals for a reason right? Naruto added, making Satsuki raise a brow at him. Me? You? Rivals. Don't make me laugh, loser. I would never be rivals with the dead lass. Satsuki retorted. Naruto smirked at her. Tell that to my victory yesterday. 140 push-ups to your 120. It's a victory for me I don't get you Satsuki. It's just a rivalry, no harm to it. Naruto crossed his arms as he looked into her eyes. Besides, I think we would be great friends. Naruto added confidently. But in his mind, he was berating himself for what he said. Dude what the fuck why would you say that to her? Now she's definitely gonna beat you up Naruto shouted in his mind, hoping Satsuki wouldn't take his words the wrong way. Satsuki widened her eyes a little. Naruto noticed it but didn't comment on it. She snorted before looking back in front of her. You're delusional if you think I would be friends with you, Naruto. Satsuki whispered before entering her signature brooding pose. Naruto didn't miss the pretty unnoticeable warm smile on her face after Satsuki finished her sentence. He laughed as he scratched his head. Sure sure, whatever you say. I don't need your agreement. You're already a friend in my eyes. See you later, have a nice day or something. Naruto mumbled before heading towards where Shikamaru and Choji were sitting, leaving Satsuki to her own devices. Dude, I think that was the most sentences she ever said. Her fanboys are gonna kill you. Shikamaru commented as Naruto sat beside him. Naruto shrugged. It's nothing special Shikamaru. You just have to say the right things. And the fanboys can go fuck themselves for all I care. Naruto replied nonchalantly. Choji handed him some chips, and Naruto gladly took them. Wait, you can actually say the right things? Shikamaru asked while raising a brow at him. Naruto rolled his eyes. Yes I can Shika. I just don't bother thinking about what I say most of the time. When I do, it'll be one hell of a conversation. Believe it. Naruto replied confidently. Shikamaru hummed. Hey, you still have that shogi board in your bag? Naruto asked him. Shikamaru yawned and nodded. Yeah I do. You sure you want to lose to me again? Shikamaru taunted with a smirk on his face. Naruto smirked back. Losing is just a part of my journey to becoming Hokage, Shikamaru. I'll win in a match with you one day. Believe it whatever you say. Naruto. When will you ever start paying attention in class? 
Naruka asked Naruto. Naruto had gotten himself into tension once again. Naruto crossed his arms. When you don't include math and science into your schedule, then maybe I'll start paying attention. Naruto replied to him. Naruka sighed and rubbed his head. You can't keep going like this Naruto. You have failed the graduation exam three times now. I thought you wanted to be Hokage, how are you going to do that if you can't even pass the graduation exam? Naruka asked with a frown on his face. Naruto gritted his teeth. Maybe if you guys stop sabotaging me. Then maybe I can pass this crappy exam Naruto yelled, shocking Naruka with his words. What? Naruka asked him. Naruto nodded. Yeah, you heard me. You guys are sabotaging me. You hand me shuriken and kunai that are duds. You kicked me out of class for no reason and handed me false information. I ain't stupid, Iruka sensei Naruto stated confidently. Iruka shook his head. I would never do that to you, Naruto. Iruka replied seriously. The old me probably would, but that's in the past. Iruka thought before continuing to speak. I will have to look into this. You should also show me your equipment now. If you're telling the truth, then I will replace the duds with the standard equipment fit for a shinobi. Iruka promised him. Naruto nodded before placing his shuriken holster tied to his leg onto the table. Naruka opened it and examined the kunai and shuriken inside the holster. Naruto wasn't lying, all of them were duds. I'm so sorry I didn't realize it sooner, Naruto. I'll replace your equipment, and I will find those responsible and have them dishonorably discharged for sabotaging a student. Naruka apologized sincerely. Naruto sighed. It's alright Iruka-sensei. You didn't know. Naruto mumbled back. Naruka patted Naruto's shoulder. Back to what I was saying, you need to be more serious about living the shinobi life, Naruto. It isn't all fun and games, the shinobi life is filled with combat and death. War between the five great nations is always an inch away from happening. Naruka explained to him. Naruto didn't say anything, listening to his words while donning a serious expression. But it's not too late for you Naruto, you still have time to improve while you can. The first thing we need to work on is your education. I have the perfect person to help you with that. Come in please, Naruka shouted while looking at the entrance to the classroom. The door opened and Naruto widened his eyes seeing who entered the room. Sakura-chan. Naruto muttered, wondering why the pink-haired girl was here. Did she also get attention too? He thought as she approached them. Why did you call me here, sensei? Sakura asked while putting her hands on her waist. Naruka smiled down at his student. You know why, Sakura. It's about the tutoring job Lord Third offered you an hour ago. Naruka replied. Okay. So who's my student? Sakura asked curiously. Naruka smiled widened as he slowly turned his head at Naruto. Sakura widened her eyes, hoping that it wasn't true. Naruka grinned as he pointed at Naruto. He's right over there. Naruka revealed as Naruto widened his eyes in shock. WH what? Sakura shrieked and dropped to the ground on her knees. Naruto looked at her. Oi. What kind of reaction was that? Naruto shouted in his mind. Sakura pointed at Naruto. Do you Lord Third wanna kill me, sensei I can't teach him. Sakura argued, making Iruka raise a curious browder. Why not Sakura? Because he's loud, unorthodox, inattentive and incredibly stupid. How can I teach him if you won't even understand and pay attention to my lessons? Sakura shouted. Naruto frowned and clutched his heart, feeling a little hurt at Sakura's hurtful words. Iruka frowned when he heard her words. He grabbed her hand, pulling her up. Sakura, come outside with me. We need to have a talk. Iruka told her seriously. Sakura gulped, never seeing her sensei that serious before. Sakura and Iruka exited the room. Iruka closed the door behind him and went far away from the room, away from prying ears. Sakura, you know that isn't nice. Think before you speak because Naruto has feelings like you and everyone else in this world. Iruka scolded her sternly, making Sakura look down, feeling ashamed of herself. Instead of making fun of his circumstances, you should be supportive of him and help him get better. Naruto despite being the happy-go-lucky blonde you know, isn't always like that. Naruto is alone. He doesn't know who his parents are, and he lives in a run-down apartment with barely any money to spend. And that is also why he misbehaves so much, the sadness of having a parent yell at you is nowhere near how he feels. But Naruto doesn't cry about it. He aims to make his life better by working towards his dream, which is becoming Hokage. You may see him as a weak boy, but I see him as the strongest man in Kanoha for having to face such challenges at a young age. I didn't know. I'm so sorry Sakura whispered. If she wasn't ashamed of her actions before, she was now. Naruka shook his head. It's not me who you should be apologizing to Sakura, it's Naruto. Naruto had a serene expression on his face as he was drawing something on the class chalkboard. He was drawing Sakura. 
As soon as the sliding door to the class opened, Naruto immediately rubbed off his drawing on the chalkboard and threw away the chalk in his hand. Sakura and Iruka entered the room. Naruto looked at Sakura who had an apologetic expression on her face. Sakura suddenly bowed deeply at him, surprising Naruto. Iruka stood beside her while having a stern facial expression. Naruto. I'm very sorry about what I said to you just now it wasn't right. Will you forgive me Sakura apologized sincerely and asked. Naruto stared at her with a surprised expression. Sakura-chan Naruto suddenly smiled, with such a sincere apology like that, how could he not forgive her? Maybe he was a little biased because she was pretty, but we won't talk about that. Hey, it's alright. How about we let bygones be bygones? Naruto offered while holding out his hand. Sakura looked up at him with a surprised expression. Jay just like that. She whispered to herself. Naruto grinned at her. Let's be friends Sakura-chan. Naruto offered. Sakura smiled and stood upright. She shook Naruto's hand and nodded at him. Yeah. Let's be friends. Sakura stood outside Naruto's apartment with a calm expression on her face. After apologizing to Naruto, Sakura immediately ran back home to prepare for her first tutoring session. This is where Naruto lives. Sakura whispered, feeling bad again for having made fun of Naruto. How could he even forgive her so casually? She had been making fun of him for years now. Sakura shook her head. No, Naruto doesn't want you to feel bad about him. Remember, he's working hard to have better living conditions. Sakura reminded herself before knocking on the door. The door opened, revealing Naruto dressed in casual clothes. A black shirt and orange pants. Sakura smiled warmly at him while Naruto grinned broadly at her. Hi Sakura-chan, hello Naruto. Are you ready for the tutoring session? Sakura asked him. Naruto nodded and stepped aside. You bet I am. Come on in. Naruto invited her. Sakura took off her shoes before stepping in his small apartment. She looked around the place, it was small but very clean. She was mostly expecting the place to be littered with empty cups of cup ramen. There's the living room. The dining room is over there. Toilet is there and that's it. It's not much but it's all I can afford right now unfortunately. Naruto whispered sadly, making Sakura frown at his words. Naruto noticed her sad face. Don't worry. I'm working on that. The next time we have these tutoring sessions, you'll be stepping into a whole another place. Believe it. Naruto assured her confidently. Sakura smiled and nodded. There was one thing she liked about Naruto, it was his confidence in the way he spoke. Even though it may seem impossible for him, the way he words it makes you trust that he can do it. They sat on the seats near the dining table, and the tutoring session started then. Naruto realized that if he was to pass the graduation exam with flying colors, he needed to focus, no matter how boring the subject might be. Sakura, despite being a first-time teacher, was actually doing quite well teaching mathematics to the hyperactive blonde. She had asked Aruka for advice on how to teach him. She learned from Aruka that he was remarkable at tactile learning. So she had him do a bunch of practice questions so that he could get a good understanding of the formulas. Naruto was quite good if you actually have patience to explain complicated things to him. Sakura was surprised at the level of patience she has in herself. She was 100% sure that she would have been extremely frustrated at the constant questions Naruto was asking her. A few hours have passed, and Naruto has already caught up with a quarter of this year's syllabus. It would take a while to get him to fully master it, but that was for another session. Sakura was proud of herself and Naruto. And that's it for today. You did very well, Naruto. Sakura praised him. Naruto blushed and laughed nervously. Oh, stop it, Sakura-chan. You're making me blush. Naruto replied while scratching the back of his head. Sakura giggled at his reaction. Ah. Now that it's over, I can finally go train now. Naruto declared before gathering his shinobi equipment. He turned to look at Sakura who was getting ready to leave his home. Hey Sakura-chan, you down for some training? Naruto asked, making Sakura jolt at the sudden question. Sakura looked at him nervously. Ah sorry Naruto, but I have some business to take care of. Sakura gave a lame excuse, hoping Naruto wouldn't question her further. Unfortunately, Naruto wasn't buying her excuse one bit. Oh come on Sakura-chan. Don't tell me you're afraid of some dirt and sweat. You're a future shinobi, and training sessions is gonna be a normal thing once you're in a genin team. It's gonna be fun, believe it. We'll do some yukijutsu training, some cardio and maybe a little sparring. Naruto argued with her while he tied his shuriken holster around his right knee properly. Um Sakura was unsure how to answer him. No one knew this, but she was scared about training. She was scared because training would make her not look like a girl, and she was focusing on getting Satsuki's attention above everything else. If you don't want to train, then what was the reason you signed up for the academy? Ha Sakura-chan. Naruto asked Sakura while raising a browder. 
Naruto was learning more about Sakura now more than he ever did in the academy. She is definitely ill-prepared for the duties of a shinobi. I'll take your silence as an answer. You don't really know what you're doing there are you? Naruto asked with a frown on his face. Sakura widened her eyes. Yes I do. I'm gonna be a strong Kanoichi. Stronger than every Kanoichi in the world, even Lady Tsunade. Sakura declared. We'll start working on it then. That title won't be yours if you don't work for it. I'm gonna become Hokage so that everyone will acknowledge me. If I don't work myself to death, I will remain a loser forever. Believe it Naruto replied. Sakura made her decision then and there. W well, is it too late to join you, Naruto? Nope. Come on, let's go wow, Sakura-chan. I would never thought I'd say this, but you suck. We haven't even been sparring for 5 minutes, and you look like you're about to die. Naruto commented bluntly while looking at Sakura who was lying down on the ground in a spread eagle position. Sakura had no stamina, no strength and no durability at all. She lacked any particular combat skill, other than the basic skills and the academy to jutsu stance she learned in the academy. You don't need to tell me that idiot Sakura wheezed out. Naruto laughed as he sat beside her. So, you wanna give up on training now? Naruto asked her. Sakura glared at him for saying such a thing. Hell no. Sakura replied determinedly. She felt extremely stupid right now. How could she not realize this sooner? In the academy, she succeeded through studying alone to the point of pride. But as a shinobi, however, this is proven insufficient as missions cannot be truly completed merely with book smarts, and it is necessary to be able to fight, so that other shinobi will not kill her or her teammates. Sakura made the decision to change this about herself, deciding to make a training schedule for herself when she got home. How are you still standing? Sakura asked as her breathing became more normal. Naruto shrugged. I don't know how to answer that, Sakura-chan. It's been like this since I was born. I have more chakra than most jonins in Konoha, and I'm also called a stamina freak by Shikamaru. Naruto replied. It must be genetic. Sakura theorized, making Naruto shrug again because he genuinely didn't know if that is true or not. Can you walk? Naruto asked, preparing to help Sakura in any way he can. Sakura sat up and grunted as she stood up. Yeah don't worry about me Naruto Wo. Sakura yelled as her legs went numb as soon as she took the first step. Naruto reacted just in time to catch her, preventing her from face planting the grassy ground. Alright, I'm giving you a piggyback ride back home. Naruto decided. Sakura didn't have time to argue because she was already being carried by Naruto the second after he made his decision. Sakura sighed in defeat and put her head on his right shoulder. Naruto blushed, feeling her warmth on his back. He never felt more nervous in his life. Am I heavy? Sakura asked in concern, noticing Naruto's flustered expression. Naruto grinned broadly. You're as heavy as a hippo could be. Naruto joked, trying to lighten the mood. Shanro. Bunk. You don't say that to a woman, idiot. Sakura scolded after she bonked Naruto on the head. She had an embarrassed blush on her face hearing Naruto's words. Naruto huffed angrily, feeling some pain on his head. Jeez, I was just joking. Naruto grumbled. Sakura snorted. Well you don't sound like you're joking. Sakura argued. Naruto sighed and smiled wryly. Sakura giggled before lying down her head on his shoulder again. Sakura noticed that the villagers were all glaring daggers at Naruto, while looking at her with pity in their eyes. She felt uncomfortable and looked at Naruto to see that he was treating it was just a normal occurrence to him. That made Sakura sad and confused. I know he's a prankster and all, but to have the villagers hate him out in the open like that. There must be something more to this than just hating him for being a prankster. Sakura thought to herself, deciding to try and find out the real reason the Kanoha villagers hate the blonde. After receiving directions from Sakura, Naruto was now standing in front of the front door of her home. Naruto knocked on it. Knock knock knock. Coming he heard a woman shout from behind the door. A few seconds later, the door opened to reveal Mibuki Haruno, Sakura's mother. Mibuki is a Kanoichi and is a part of the allied mom's force. It is an age-old Kanahagakur team made up solely of all the mothers in the village. During wartime, they would protect the village and those left within it, until their loved ones returned from war. Mibuki is a fair-skinned woman with shoulder-length blonde hair with a single bang which folds down into her face. She also has green eyes and wears a white kippa dress with three red circular designs at the bottom of the front of her dress, as well as the back. Underneath the dress, she wears pink 3 4 length pants along with brown sandals. Oh my. Who are you, handsome? Mibuki smiled warmly at Naruto who blushed at the compliment. Naruto smiled at her. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto and I brought Sakura-chan home. Naruto explained to Mibuki cheerfully. Sakura hid her face behind Naruto's head, not wanting to show her embarrassment of being in this position. Oh dear. What happened to you, Sakura? 
Mibuki asked her daughter with a concerned frown on her face. Sakura grinned nervously at her mother. I trained with Naruto after I finished tutoring him. Turns out I'm very ill prepared for the shinobi world. Sakura explained. Mibuki nodded as Naruto slowly and gently let Sakura down. Sakura stood on the ground and looked back at Naruto. She smiled warmly at him. Thanks Naruto. I'll see you tomorrow alright. Sakura asked him while holding out her hand. Naruto nodded and shook it. Yeah. See you tomorrow, Sakura-chan. It was nice meeting you too miss. Naruto waved at Sakura and Mibuki before he ran off. Stay safe now. Mibuki shouted before looking down at her daughter. She smiled slyly at the pink-haired girl, scaring her. So Sakura, is Naruto your boyfriend? Mibuki teased her. Sakura's face instantly became as bright as her hair. Shanaro don't waste my energy anymore Mame chan ph Sakura huffed before stomping into her home. Mibuki giggled before entering it with her daughter, not forgetting to close the front door. I think you two would make a good couple. What did I just say? And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.